is a Will Clayton Church of Christ in Alma, Texas. This is May 5th, 2022. This is series on the seven deadly doctrines in the Church of Christ. Seven deadly doctrines in the Church of Christ. This is part three. And this is in the Church of Christ. It has nothing to do with the denomination of the world. Seven letters to seven churches of Christ. And only five of them we're going to deal with in this series. See, that kind of lets you know there's no such thing as a church outside of Church of Christ. Did you see a letter to the Baptist Church? Ain't that amazing? Anybody seen a letter to the Methodist, to the Pope? Tell the messenger to Rome, to the Pope, to the Catholic Church. Ain't that amazing? And you know that none of the names were mentioned of which church the letter went to? Because it's only one church. Y'all caught that? But at the time this letter was written, there are a there are so many churches and laws and God's policy. Say, man, there are many. Each God has a church. Solomon proved it. He had to be one for Chemosh. The other girl said, well, my God, Murdoch. You got to be one for me too, baby. And he did. And you went to church with your old girl, Chemosh. Next week, you're coming with me. Showing you. Every God has a following. That means it's a church. So that when this was written, thought that wasn't no Baptist church. Who cares? That were these churches. That, and the Baptist church and Catholic church have taken parts of the. That's why they look like we can read about in the Bible. A different image. That's why, brethren. But your brethren look like that too. A different image. We got letters to churches of Christ that look like the nominated church in the Bible. That's how we know. I'm telling you now, better repent if you didn't go to church. Because, man, that one's going to hold you up at the judgment. Remember. The Lord got plenty of people to keep happy in heaven without us there individually. Plenty. So that doesn't mean anything for the Lord. So you, just, you just couldn't say you were wrong. If it's okay for you not to go to church, it's okay for a girl to have a baby after a baby and quit bothering her about getting married. Leave her alone. That's her body. She ain't asking you for no money. She might have to lend you some money. Let her have all the babies she wants with a different man. So maybe she wants to populate the world like Genghis Khan. Miss Genghis Khan put a baby in every nation. What you going to tell her? You're going to try to turn to the text. And then she's going to say, man, this women have babies back then. She got you there. At least I'm not eating my baby. She got you there. Amen. See, you see how it comes back? So you need to tell your brother to quit lying and saying that it was wrong for the saints to go to church. They're wrong for not going. That's not no light subject, brother. Amen. You just, it's so astounding. You just, you never thought your brethren would teach. You, know, you just never thought that, huh? <laughs> they were teaching it already. Depending on how much money you had. They would let you know. Bro, so-and-so left his offering. Mm. But he didn't go to church. We have to argue with some brethren to be able to go worship with people. So we're supposed to go do the whole worship, brethren. Not to take the Lord's Supper. Well, you can do that. You can do that. I looked at the brother like he was crazy. You can do that. Nobody know we had a conversation at night. Late at night, I said, you, what do you mean you can do that? I said, you got to do that. Now, who am I? How could I know that? And he didn't know that. He went to school. How could I know that? Because it's in the Bible, brethren. I hope you take it seriously because, see, one of your sins is going to catch you. See, you're not going to be able to let go of it. He's not going to help you because you're lying on him. You're saying that everything in the book is just not that important. Only what you think is important. That's not it. Every word. And we have to keep it. So we go to Revelation 2 and 12 now. And uh, we're going to look at that's our section we're working with as was already read. We talked about Nicolaitan last week. We proved to you what it was because you can't prove what it is or isn't. So one thing you do know, it's not Jesus' name. So it is coming in another name. And with another name comes another doctrine. Some of the Bible or none of the Bible. It doesn't matter. Now we're going to look at Balaam's doctrine. Balaam's doctrine is a little bit more complex. It's a very powerful doctrine. Also, as is Nicolaitan. But for us, it's more complex. Because Nicolaitan is just, bam, different name. Balaam is like, we got details on what this prophet of God taught. See, we would like to think he's not a prophet God. He is. He's just before Moses. God. See, 
Abraham was called a prophet. See, brethren, this is another thing I, I'm telling you, boy, pray for me because I'm getting mad at these gospel preachers so-called that start to play with what the Bible means because they don't, they, they, they're so busy they can't study it. But the word is in there. You, you got to concord it, man. You can reach what you want. Sometimes I hit the word six or seven times before I narrow it down and find the scripture I remember. You do that business, I got a job, man. Some of these guys are full-time evangelists. I'm a part-time. I can you not have time. What do you do? Amen. That's all you do is preach. From sun up to sundown, all you do is preach. That's it. One guy asked me, say, I thought you was a man of God. I say, I am. I said, but I got to work, dude. You understand? And he don't even listen to what I tell him. He always want to talk about money. He's going to tell me what I said. I'm going to talk about money anyway when I do tell you about the Bible. He couldn't do nothing but just acknowledge because that's like a Bitcoin, which is fine. I let him talk what he want to talk about. So hopefully when I get to say something, I always say something about the Bible. And they try to put it on my head. He don't want to remember because it's mine on money. That's fine. Yeah. It won't, it's going to be on money in hell too. Why did I do that? Why did I do that? Why did I do that? Numbers 22. Let's see what Balaam doctrine Because you can't just make it up. You can't just say it's coming in another name on it. That's one of the things. So coming in Balaam's name is one of the things that is wrong. Because Balaam began to speak for God where God had not spoken. But Balaam got a lot of meat with this one. And a lot of the brethren, you know, they do it on the regular. Yes, they do. On the regular. Your brethren, I'm telling you not because I know you love them. I love them too, but I'm not following. Some of the greatest men I've heard, you, I heard the name come out your mouth, brethren. You heard them come out my mouth. But I'm telling you, they're snakes. See, the problem is you don't like that, but you will look at T.D. Jakes in a different way. But you'll accept that and see, you're not going to get in. Telling you not getting in. See, because I don't know what makes you think speaking well of these men is going to do good. There are saints listening to them. And they believe that doctrine. You say, I can't do nothing about it. Well, quit speaking that they're righteous preachers because they're not. You already know what they do. And what good will God give you at the judgment because you spoke well of a criminal? I don't know that God. You must have a different God. Maybe you got Nicolaitan doctrine. I don't even know it. Numbers 22, and the children of Israel set far and pitched in the plains of Moab on this side of Jordan by Jericho. See how the is telling you where they are. You don't have to guess where they are. It's telling you. And, Bal and ba Balak, the son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. Okay? And Moab was so afraid of the people because they were many. And Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. Now look, now look what's happening. And Moab said unto the elders of Midian. So you got two groups, Moab and Midian, working together. Guess who their children, guess who their daddy is? Lot. Remember the Drunken Express? The Drunken Express, this is what it brought. These two groups. One daughter had Moab, one daughter had Midian. Where they come from? That's where they come from. Wow. Still giving Israel trouble. And Moab was distressed. And Moab said to the elders of Midian, Now this company shall lick up all that is round about us as ox licking up the grass of the field. And Balak, the son of Zippor, was king of the Moabites at that time. It's telling you, you don't have to guess. I'm doing no guess. He sent a message before, or sent a message therefore unto Balaam, begin me, the son of Beor. Now here comes the main character. Balaam, the son of Beor, to Pethor, which is by the river of the land of children of, of his people, to call, look, he said, land of children of his people, to call him saying, Oh, there's a people come out from Egypt. Oh, they cover the face of the earth, and they abode about over against How do you know they came from Egypt without Twitter and the internet? How do you know that? You see how God shows us how ignorant we are? We think because we can have a little instrument. They knew what stuff was. They said, oh, it came from Egypt. How would you know that? There's no sign. Did y'all have a sign coming from Egypt? See, see, brethren, this is a, this is a blasphemy 
When you start hearing men talk about stuff we have and they don't have, see, that's called blasphemy. It injures the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost couldn't do his job back then, you know. Tunes had many of Now he got it. He got it. Now that's why you're going to go to hell. See, I love to say that part because I know that makes the righteous comfortable and the wicked mad. And that's what we want to make wicked people mad so they can attack us and kill us and then condemn themselves. Y'all hear what I just said? That's why Jesus said, that's why I say leave him alone. See, he wants them angry because he wants them to get away from me. That's why Jesus said, let them go. Let them go, disciples. We need to clear their eyes. We can talk about righteousness. Let them go. See, you, I don't know what Jesus, you might be worshiping. You might be worshiping Jesus that likes crooks and embraces crooks and naysayers, people talking about each other behind each other's back. You might like that Jesus. See, that Jesus is going to hell too. That's the one in 2 Corinthians 11. That Jesus is going to hell. Because that's the one we make up. See, brethren, Christianity is sobering. It's a wake-up call. Every Sunday morning, you should be woke. Ah, breathing in. Every time you read the gospel, you should, it's like a quick wake-up. Why? Ah, man. Thankful to God I'm in the church. That's how, if, it's not, if you're getting a different response, you're not in the church. You're just in the building when you come. Come now, therefore, I pray thee. See, now they're out of Egypt. So he wants them to help him with something. He needs his help. He's going to tell you why. Balaam is a bad boy. He can handle his business. He's going to tell you why. You wonder why Balak is running him down so. He says, uh, they cover the face of the earth. Look at verse 5. He said, message him. He says, uh, Behold, there's a people out of Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth. There's a lot of people. I mean, you know, if we can see, you can see, man, that thing, you can't even see the edge of them. There's so many. And they abide over against me. Now, some man will say, see, see, the Bible speaks like that. We know they don't cover the whole earth because there's nobody in America. You got me? Nobody on the island. He didn't look to the islands of Hawaii. He said, they over in Hawaii, too. So this is a term. They cover the face of the earth. They're large truth. See, this is where another blasphemer steps in. So that's why I say, man, the Bible is confusing. It's not confusing. It's not confusing. We talk like this all the time. Man, the police everywhere. It's only a few places they are. But he'll accept that. You know why? Because he wants to make you think the book is flawed. And, and he deserves to deceive you. He deserves. He deserves to get you. And me too. If you're not going to trust God. He deserves our soul. He's earned it. He's earned it. Give him yours. I'm not giving him mine. Amen. I suggest you don't. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me, this people. Now, watch this. That's not profanity. I want you to say what you do to people to make them fail. Now, watch how he proves. For they are too mighty for me. He already, he's already added it up. Peradventure, I shall prevail. So he says, if you curse them, I might make it. I might get to defeat them. He knows I got a fighting chance if you curse them. He knows Balaam can't guarantee. Even with the cursing, you still have to bring a certain degree of strength. So he knows I got my, I got my stuff together. If you curse them, that give me a chance. Is that in your body? That's what I'm reading. That's what it said. That we may smite them. And that I may drive them out of the land, for I know, watch me know, that he whom thou blessest, watch this, is see the history, the Twitter page that said, yeah man, when Balaam say something, if he say you bless, you bless. Because he's a prophet of God. And whom thou curses is curse. He said, well see nobody yet, you don't curse. See, now that don't mean that the other person going to get the victory, but he know one thing, when you curse him, boy, they wounded. So if somebody come up on them, if they got what they got together, they win. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination. See, these are the rewards of divination. Divine power brought forth benefits and rewards. In their hand, and they came unto Balaam and spake unto him the words of Balak. So they came to talk. And said, remember, I told you, it's a team up of Moab and Midian. And he said unto them, Lodge here this night, and I will bring you word again, as the Lord shall speak unto me. And the prince of Moab abode with Balaam. He's not a witch. He's not a warlock. He's not going to do no divination. 
The relationship where he is connected to God. We're going to start of this. We're going to start of this. And God came up to Balaam and said, what men are these with thee? Man, every time I read that, every time I read, man, it just gets deeply emotional. I was about to stop a minute. Catch my breath. Because the Lord is so concerned about Balaam's soul. He asked him, who are these men with you? Because I love you, man. We got a connection. God coming to you just like that in me. Who you went to eat with last week? You supposed to know. You know. Well, I, I, my boy who smoked more weed than Mike Tyson. That's what I was hanging with. And we drank too far. Just got drunk, act crazy. That's who I was. That's, yeah. See, I, I, I'm, why are you with them? See, the next time, uh, uh, why are they with you? What does he care about, Beta? You're my prophet. I care about who you with. Why are they with you? Balaam said unto God, Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, he has sent unto me, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt. Balaam doesn't know who they are. The, the Lord didn't tell the prophet everything. That's one thing we need to understand. The prophet, when the woman came, it was hidden from him. He told his servant, the Lord had hid it from me. They didn't know everything because they're not Jesus. Jesus didn't even know everything. We just can't, like I saw you last week, we just can't let the Father be the ultimate. Just got to have somebody locked in with him. Let's make it Jesus because he's too much by himself. No, no Jesus, down. Holy Spirit functions when God sins. Where God sins. The Father's the top. You know why that bothers people? Because you know that's the one that causes trouble. All these rules, it's him. So it's not the Holy Ghost. He, he only says what he here. And Jesus, you know, he already said, see, it's the Father, man. See, he the one. He stay, if it's a mess, it's him. And guess who said that? God. God said, if it's even the land, I did it. And you know what I'm talking He said, Is it, if it's even the land, I did it. He said, if it's even the land, I don't know about it. He said, yeah, because I let it go. I know why the devil whooping you. I let it go. I know why you don't have no more food, because I let it go. It don't matter who did it, I let it go. Because if God says it's not going down, it's not going down. So nobody has any power without God, including Satan. So why do you fear him? Why do you do what he says? No matter how much he pressures you, you have to look at him and say, listen, fool, you don't have no power without God. Get away from me. You know why we don't? Because I like that thing that's shining in his hand. As a matter of fact, hold on for you leave. What's that in your hand? What does that say? Let me see that. Now, don't look at it. I don't want it. Like, you know, I don't like it. This is pretty. For you know it, he got you. He got you, brother. I done had him give me before. I know the fool. I'm not here to give me no more, you stupid fool. You'll never give me again. And I don't care who I have to step on or step around to keep him out my way. I'm going to do him just like Jesus did, Peter. Get behind me, Satan. If it's you, brother, I'm going to tell you. Get behind me, Satan. And you better tell me. I, I value my soul, brethren. I value, I hope you value yours. Nothing you can say to me. Nothing you can give me. Nothing I should be able to give or say to you to cause you to fall from Christ. I don't care how sweet you are or how much benefit and muscle and strength of finances or love or whatever you do. If you let somebody split you and Jesus up, you just deserved it. You just, your time ran out. Verse 11. He says, they cover the face of the earth. Come now, curse them. Peradventure, I shall buy, I'll be able to overcome them and drive them. Now, he's telling God what Balaam, what Balak has already told the people he needs him to do. Then God said to Balaam, thou shalt not go with them. Now, I want you to remember verse 12. What's the first thing God told you? Stay married till you die, didn't he? Don't get high, didn't he? Don't steal, didn't he? First thing he told, the first thing he told, go to church. Should have remembered. See, if Balaam had to remember the first thing, there wouldn't have been no more discussion. I'm going to prove to you what's Balaam doctrine. One of the things is to deceive God and man. Try to run game on God and man. I can get mad sometimes. I can't never get God, but I'm too stupid, so I'm going to keep trying to run game on it. I'm going to get on TikTok and act a fool, forgetting as a loophole 
Somebody else got this that I didn't know about. How'd they get it? I was told this block. We got your trash. And we got you in living color. Chest all out half high. Eyes about to close. Laying all back. Men and women. You just, you you think, because some people a certain age, they don't know a ticket. Man, this is nothing but a computer. Matter of fact, you might can't even pay your bills. Somebody might be paying your bills for you. Grown folks can pay their bills. Old folks can pay their got old money and have 20 phones. And some kind of way, God let it get through. Oops. And they say, that's brother so-and-so. Cussing, you cussing on TikTok. That's side you curse on. And then you come to church, it's all good. I'm holy. I am not holy. See, did you playing with God? You're not, you're not playing with us because we, we didn't make it. you playing with God. I'm saying you because I'm, I'm not on that doing that. I'm telling you not. Find something on me. You better, you better do some serious FBI car because somebody put my face somewhere. I don't have to do no trash like that. <laughs> See, some people learn they get stung once. They don't keep going back. The bee hurts. The bee sting hurts. You gonna stick my hand in, in the beehive again? See if I can just grab another thing of honey. Maybe they won't sting me this time. Nah, mm -mm. no. Nah. You learn. Some people have sense and they learn. And so he says here that uh, don't go with them. Let's remember verse twelve. Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. Two things. Don't go with them and don't curse. Why? Well, because they're blessed. Because who blessed them? You know who blessed them, Balaam. I did, the father. And Balaam rose up in the morning and said unto the prince of Balak, Get you into your land, for the Lord refused to give me leave to go with you. Watch well, that. He got that right, right? Did you hear him say the other part? You know why people have selective hearing? Because they are crooked. Starting with gospel preachers. Say one thing, but ain't say the other part. You say, well, brother, you ain't say the part. You ain't say the other part. Oh, you know, I meant that when you ain't say, can you say it, brother? Do we have to go to church? Can you say it, preacher? Since you're so holy, can you say we got to go to church? Because he know. He got some people that's not going to come to church and want to, and he need their money. I tell them they got to go. They may not put that three, four hundred dollars in a pot, maybe a thousand. So people drop some heavy money in the church. He need that grand. He need that. And so he says here, go get to your land. Verse 14, the prince of Moab rose up and they went unto Balaam and said unto Balaam, said Balaam refused to come with us. So notice it said, the prince of Moab rose up. I thought it was two groups when it did. See, this how this how the Lord catch a devil. See, he thinks it's one, it's two groups. He already said Moab and Midian. You see, this is what people miss in debates and saints too. Because before you did that other debate, you was caught looking at pornography while you was drunk one night. But you're supposed to be holy. You ask God forgive, but it's still in your heart. So you miss a verse and they got you, embarrass you. Now you don't want to act like it's even in the Bible no more. What sin you doing that's blocking you? How come you can't remember? Or how come you can't not? Oh, yeah, I did miss that. Y'all know we got to do that, bro. Because it's not in me. See, God's not going to let it stay because that's his material. He wants to get that out. You don't deserve it. Give me that back. That's what I mean. Give me that talent back. Give it back, you little crook. Now you got nothing. And who's going to help you now? Or oh, you can keep that junk. I'm throwing that, you and the earth in hell. See, this is God's mentality when he takes. I want you, you only, I'm giving it to him anyway. It's going to hell. It ain't no matter who I give it to. See, all the components you must always remember. And when someone reminds you, just make sure it's in the Bible, not their thought. Let them say, can you read that? And then you put it back in and say, okay, it's right. Not no reasoning, not no theology. Just, just read the answer, man. So well, it doesn't say anything about that. But I, I'm thinking that's what we don't want you to do. We don't want you to think. We want you to say, read, and be quiet, not think. Because we don't need your thoughts. You keep to yourself. Keep to yourself, but don't share them. 
Because no one cares about our opinions, brethren. No one cares about our opinions. He says here, this is an issue now for this man. Verse 15, and Balak sent yet again prince more and more armor than they. So he said, how level got see? Last time they sent a senator. This time they sent a vice president. So somebody was heavy, more muscle. Sent my right arm guy. We know everybody know that's, that's his right arm guy, man. He sent him. And they came to Balaam and said to him, Thus said Balak the son of Zippor, Let nothing I pray thee hinder thee from coming unto me, for I will promote thee. Uh oh, there's another thing you gotta watch out. So, what is another thing? So, what are the problems with Balaam's doctrine? The offering of promotion, also. Offering of promotion. See, that's a part of the doctrine. See, this is what gets him. Promotion. See, it, it's, it's, it's a doctrine that offers, is, offers benefits. It's not just something taught against God. It has attachments, like a vacuum cleaner. I need this little skinny thing to get in the corner of his heart. I got to run it along the edge. I get it. Promoter. That's promoter. See, you got to know what was going on in the church. What would make him link them to a doctrine called Balaam. This kind of stuff got to Balaam. So you got to offer to be producing what gets to Balaam. It's a package because this is what causes him to separate himself from God eventually. So he says, you know, I will promote thee. So I'm going to make you somebody. Don't think this doesn't affect me because God told David, I made you great like the great men of the earth. And that meant something to David. But it came from God. See, don't think people want, don't want to be some. See, yeah, if these so holier than thou saying, I will be nothing, baby. You know, okay, well, that's fine. Then act like it. Go to church. You can't even go to church. You don't want to be nothing. Look like you don't want to be a saint. Go to church. Because you really don't want to be nothing, you would go to church. Because you know you are nothing without Christ. So I have to understand, brothers. It's simple, simple process. Not high tech. It's easily understood. Verse 17, he says, very great honor. I will do whatsoever thou said to me. Look, boy, he hits the hot button. Whatever you say, I do. You got some people who negotiate contracts, and it gets to this point, they're that good. And they say, well, you tell us what you want. Some sports players. Some sports players get so good, they say, well, what do you want, Bob? I mean, got you now. But he don't not that crazy. He knows some things you can't do. He can't say, give me the team, no. They you know within reason. Everybody know what that means. So, you know, he's not going to tell him, let me be the king of my up. Man, don't be stupid. I'll cut you up right here. But what do you want? Obvious within reason. It's not listed there because we know that. See, there's another thing that's blasphemy against God to say that men don't think like that. Men are going to give you everything. But the statement says whatever you want, obviously within reason. He says, come therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people. And Balaam answered and said unto the servant of Balak, if Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of the law of my God to do less or more. Notice, he still hasn't said all the specifics of what God told him. Still kind of, see, because it's kind of my heart. You know, I'm not going to raise this up yet. Nah, you know, I'm still looking like God looking at his car. I'm not going to play this one yet. I got A's, but I'm going to hold it. Why is that important? Because this is what's wrong with Balaam. He just can't keep shooting straight. It's appearing he's not going to curse them. But the thrust is, I can't go with you. But the thrust isn't, and I cannot curse this people. See, so you got to watch how a man talks. What's coming out of his mind? What is he saying? See, because... He going to eventually curse Israel, but not by his mouth. He's going to teach the nation how to get them, and that's to curse. See, when you teach people how to get saints, you just curse the saints, and God has cursed you, and you're going to die in hell. You're going to be tortured for heaven. It doesn't matter what no denomination or person said. He's not even in the church. That's like you talk about rocket science with the cashier at Kroger. Now, unless she going to school, are you going to school for rocket science? They say, that's not how rockets work. And they look at you. You go, like, hey, she's not even a rocket sign. Good cashier, very important to our lives, but not a rocket sign. But when we hear denominational people with a Bible in their hand say something, you know, some of us go, 
What you mean, friend? That's what's wrong with you. And I remember when that used to be me. What do you mean? See, nah, that's different. It's like, how can anything come good out of your mouth? Seems like you don't like the instruction of God. So I always know when you speak, it's a lie. To you the denomination, but you got a lie hooked up. And they always want you to receive when they say it. They always want you to receive, you know. They look at you, ain't that right, preacher? And you know what I love to do? To make sure you understand, not fully. It's a lie attached. Mm. What? Then you break it down, tell him why he's lying. See, because he wants your approval, because he knows you're real, and my listener needs to know you're real. See, he said I was right. See, that's what they do. They got you. Brother, you got to know. You got to know your weaponry. You got to know. Sometimes you need a spear. Sometimes you need a little knife. Because you, you can't, you know, you can't get no big old spear and throw it when the guy's two feet from you, right? He'll whoop you and take the spear and break it half and stab you with it. So you need a little knife. I'm mean, he's in close. I oh, got it. You got that's warfare. How's the spiritual warfare? You don't go way back, talk about Genesis. Hit him right there. At the statement, he made. what did Philip do? He began at Isaiah, what we call 53. He didn't go back to Genesis. And God looked at the face of my head. I hit you right here. It's talking about Jesus. See, you should know that. And I should know that. If not, probably because you don't come to church enough. I'm going to leave it right there, Fred. Or what you hear, you just don't accept. Are you watching your, your financial wallet so you miss what was said? You miss. What did he say? So, Balaam was blessed by God to have a gift because he was faithful to God. Note that. He was a prophet of God. Note that. God is about to separate Israel from the rest of the world. He is still working with other people. Oh, yes, he is. See, because remember, the separation process is beginning, but it has not begun. The reason is because God is still claiming the children of men. Oh, Zan, why are you taking the time to say, because you're going to have a lie come up and say, see, that's what I'm saying. See, Balaam, he's not a Jew. I can't say he is. I can't say he isn't. The Bible does not identify him as Jewish blood. So we lead up. No, your point is taken, friend. But this isn't a separation time. Uriah the Hittite is a proselyte. And he's Better than David at the time David sets him up. Because he's more faithful than David and Job and his nasty wife Bathsheba. He's right with God. And they're not. And so you can kill righteous people all the time with your mouth and with a sword. With the sword in your mouth. See, you just like Jesus. You got a sharp two-edged sword coming out your mouth. But it might belong to the devil. Because this is your soul that's in your mouth. But you can kill saints that are righteous physically with a real sword and with your mouth. And God holds you accountable for He says it's a murder. So you love your brethren less? He says you're murder and you have not eternal life sticking with you. See, you want eternal life to stick with you. Stay with you. Dwell with you. Hang out with you. Never leave you. It just can't go in and out. See, that's why stupid preachers that say the Holy Ghost can't leave you don't understand. That's what the promise is. He will stay with you. And if it's impossible for him to leave you, why say something like he can't leave you? Don't even say he's going to stay with you. That's because he can leave you. But stupid preachers teach he doesn't ever leave. See, now you have no text to teach that. We got David screaming from the song, don't take that Holy Spirit from me. What are we going to do with David's song? Throw it in the garbage. See, this is what's wrong, brethren. It's not necessary to talk. Just read the text and encourage to obey. I don't need no side count, no side green peas from you about you. Hey, I brought this side peas to go with the barbecue. Well, we, are, we already got. We need to go to the barbecue. You tell brother, well, you can eat that. I don't want that. That's what we eating over here. But that's what men do. Either too busy to study or too boastful to speak what well, only God wants, maybe to draw attention to themselves. Not necessary, brethren. Stick with the text. So, the reason is because the children of men are still God's creation. He still worked with them like he's done from the beginning of the first one, Adam. 
He washed the earth with a flood. Noah's not a Jew. The Jewish system hasn't even been created yet. They're holding me in everywhere. They're everywhere. Prophets that speak for God. But now the separation beginning. And Balaam is too stupid to understand. He already says a blessed people. He's just like our brethren. God just says in passing. Don't curse them. They're blessed. He doesn't shake the earth and the mountains quake. He just, and see, Balaam doesn't catch it like your brethren. Go to church. Don't wear titles. Let's just say it in person. Don't steal. Don't lie. On your father and mother. Let's just say it in person. Just stay. The sun doesn't land on the earth and it shines. That's it. And then it goes by us because we're not with God. We're not with God. So. The age of the patriarchs is still in full effect. Look at 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. See, you read the scripture and then you, this is well how we teach. You read scripture and you emphasize. You gotta do this, brother. You don't add what you think or what your thoughts are. If you haven't nailed it down on the text, keep that in your mouth. That's how we teach each other. That's how we help each other to develop, brethren. Please do it. We beg you and you should be begging me. Because you should love me up so I don't go to hell. 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 15. Let's go. I want to catch verse 14. Having eyes full of adultery and that cannot see. Cease from sin. Now watch how he links this to Balaam. I just want to throw this one in for some specifics. Beguiling unstable souls. Watch this now. Unstable. <laughs> it's okay to call a man doctor, which is Jesus type. They're unstable. It's just in religion, brother O's hand. Are you jealous because you have one? I love it when the, I love it when the intellectual ones come up to me and go, Are you jealous? Like, oh, you think maybe I am. <laughs> Jealous, man. That stupid title can't do nothing for me. From a school, what does that mean? So why would you say? Well, it's a nice question. They think it's innocent when you go when you just go, no, I'm not. Then why are you talking about because it's unrighteous? That's why. Was Jesus jealous because they were called rabbi? And everybody didn't think he was a rabbi? So are you saying Jesus is jealous? Well, Jesus said, Go, well, I'm one of God's sons, aren't you? See, that's, just always be ready for a sinner. Close proximity battle. Always have your sword, your knife ready for the sinner. Because you're pricking the heart for salvation. You're not trying to kill him. You're trying to save him. And heart they have exercised with covetous practice. Watch this. Cursed children. This is saints of God. This is saints of God. He said they're cursed. Guess who cursed them? God. Look at verse 15. Which have forsaken the right way. Watch this. Now, see, here he is. Another of the points of Balaam died. When you see, you must be right to become like Balaam. You can't, you can't be Balaam. You got to be Balaam, a saint, separate, righteous, talking for God. And then you go off track. A Baptist could never be this because he's already Balak. A Methodist, a Pope, he's Balak. Balaam is you and I if we leave the right way. How would he know the right way if God to teach him? He knows the right way. And gone astray. Look at that. Following the way of Balaam. See, Christ said, I'm the way. Well, that's Balaam says, I got a way too. So he followed the pattern of Balaam, which is to lead righteousness for multiple reasons. Covetous practice, money, promotion, whatever the case may be. But see, remember, I got to deceive God too. So I'm going to do what he said. I'm not going to curse him. I'm not going to say any church or do. I'll never say that, brother. I've been preaching since I was a young man. My dad was preaching. And he started telling you all that. And his wife right there, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember when I met him and she nothing but a sin or two. She right there pumping him up. Neither one of them going to do right. Neither one of them. And they go through their long list of righteous requirements that you must accept. But they're going to do it in a covert way, thinking they can bypass God. Some people are hateful and they start a bunch of mess in the church. They do. And it's going to sit back. Got them. They're not going to say it like that, but this is the heart. 
looking. You better make sure your intentions is right. When you say something about a saint out your mouth, you better make sure it's 100% legit because God is, is re he's reaching for your neck. Just like that. It's like, remember, Simon said, it takes a while, then he gets you. And I'm like, what happened? How did he get them? What did they do? It was covert. I didn't say it out of my mouth, but it's in my heart. It's covert. Covert practice. We know about that. Some of us look at these channels. It's covert. Undercover. Devious. Hard to detect. But it's real. And it says the son of Bozer. See, the names are a little different because it's Greek. Who loved the wages of unrighteousness. See, what's a payment for unrighteousness? It paid good. Man, unrighteousness pays mad cash. It really does. Blessings, promotion, unrighteousness? Man, you have more jets than you need. You have people carrying your stuff and bringing you food that we wish we could eat. Thank you, Susan. You eat for you know you're in the bed with Susan. She's not gonna tell nobody. And your wife don't care because she's the first lady. See, you don't know, see, you don't, you, you, your, your concept isn't there. The reality is there. The reality is there. Some people, when they think they've changed, they confess about what they did, and now they're just doing a different sin. They're just doing a different sin. One guy said he used to preach with a drink up on his pulpit. He said. And guess what? He says he's repenting. And he's doing something even worse now spiritually than he did before. Really teaching false doctrine. Nah. But because he thinks he doesn't have the drink on his pulpit with gin in it. His, his actual confession. Some of you have read his book. He thinks he doesn't have the drink on the pulpit, but he's got another drink. He's got Satan's elixir there in his heart. He really teaching false doctrine. Nah, man. He's teaching false doctrine like never before. <laughs> yeah, remember the church of Christ. If I call his name, you know, I'm not going to call his name no more. It's enough. It is enough. So, he says, but he was rebuked for his iniquity. Watch this. The dumb ass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the who? The prophet. So he was a prophet? See, this is what's wrong with not taking the New Testament. Like the black Hebrews, the Muslims, the Buddhists. See, you don't take the New Testament. But until you get here, you do not know that Balaam works for God without this text. Now you see why you need both books? You need both sections? So don't try to talk from the old and don't go to the new. Don't try to talk, stick with the new only and don't go to the old because you'll hurt yourself. See, this is the text. Book, chapter, and verse. Why is that important? I was saying because my job is to make sure you understand all the Bible is important. We're in the book of Numbers. I thought Numbers was just about record of how many people left Egypt. No, it's got a lot of meat in there. Not like that's meat too, but that's historical meat. This is meat that applies to your life. Because without you going to numbers, you have no idea who Balaam is. Revelation don't tell you nothing. You don't know the history of this guy. Who is he? Why is Peter calling him a prophet? Is he New Testament prophet? He don't have no prophet book. He didn't even come from the Old Testament. I think Peter was off. No, he just told you what he did. Because the Holy Ghost said, okay, when we write the New Testament, we're going to call him a prophet. So everybody know. Just like us. Gone bad. Just like us. So we've looked at a few areas. We're going to shut it down now. We'll take up some more when the next time the law allows me to teach. One of the teachings, love the wages of debt. I mean, wages of uh, unrighteous, which is the wages of debt. I like I like what I like what unrighteous pay. Pays well. I love number two, the promotion of unrighteous. You get promoted. See when you hang with. See that's what the other king. See that was a king. He defeated the nation, but he saw the altar. The altar was impressive. He sent the specs to the prophet, and this foolish man builds one. So he comes and now put God's altar in the back. And I talk to God about stuff myself. But let the people bring to the new altar. Because see, I found out they're God that gave them more stuff than our God. But now our God allowed us to whoop him. He did. He's a good God. But he don't give stuff. He's stingy. He's like a stingy daddy. He's not like your uncle that gives you $20 bill every time he comes by. You love him. Hey, I'll get a little hand jump and get the 20 Your daddy, you know, he fuss about a dollar. But that's because that, that's because you have to thought about your uncle is not your daddy. That's all you're going to give him is that stinky $20 bill. 
the shoes on your feet, the clothes, the underwear, the mood, the, the chicken chewing in your mouth while you hugging your uncle, that come from your daddy. Your dad don't have no $20 to drop on you every time. Because part of it went to send you to the school on a school bus. You got it? So yeah, uncle look good. Hey, baby, yeah. He not your daddy. See? So that's how people get confused about God. You're breathing you right now? That's God. So people get to say, well, God don't give you a lot. You ain't think about your heartbeat. Why doesn't it stop? When your heart just go, oh, I'm tired. I say, man, I'm a muscle. I'm going to take a break. And then you drop dead. But God said, no, you keep beating till he dies. I'll tell you when to stop. They just don't want to give God that crap. Tell you, that father's a mean image. He's mean. He's always a whooping us. That's because we're always bad. You ever tell a child, he always whooped me. You ever tell him, but baby, you do stuff bad, don't you? He goes, yeah. Okay, even a little four-year-old got it. He don't just come in, good morning. How y'all doing? Y'all eating cereal? Wop, wop, wop. And start with us. He's a mad man. So, see, you guess how to tell me, you know, you know, baby, you got whooped because you went to that club, and that's how you got that bullet in your leg. Now, your leg, but we told you to stay out the club, didn't we? You wasn't doing nothing, but you was in the club. Shouldn't have went there. That's how the bullet, now, the bullet went, went all down the street to 5th Street, turned and went to 3rd and shot you. Now, sometimes people do get shot in the house, I understand. But make sure you get a bullet in your leg, make sure you're at your house with your wife, hello, brother. Eating chicken, then you get a bullet in your leg. Still at the club with some other woman, get a bullet in there. There we go. There we go. So we understand those three things, the comprehension of it, and the understanding. Fourth thing, the Balaam doctrine, his mentality to forget what God said. First thing I got my mouth, don't go with him, don't curse him. I cannot go with thee. First thing shall go on my mouth. I cannot go with thee. And tell Balak, I'm not going to curse him. You know why? Because that's the thing he's hiding. That's what he hiding. 1 Corinthians 15. The good news is the gospel can rescue us all from these issues. <clears throat> Verse 1. Moreover, brother, not to claim you the gospel which I preach on you, which y'all said you receive when you stand. I love that part. That's why I love to keep reading it. You stand in the gospel. So if you want to bring instruments, guess what you're not standing in? You're not in the gospel. Well, the good news is we praise God different than the other priests. We're priests. We use spiritual instruments. The heart, it got to be clean too. got to be a clean heart. I remember, I'll never forget a sister told me her husband when he sweats, it's because he high. She told me that. She said, y'all never seen him sweat? She said, he high. When you see him sweat, he's high. It's coming down. I'm sweating it out. I said, wow, I would have never thought that. So he said, Jesus gave his life for ransom. And you saying with it, but the God of heaven, now he ain't, he ain't you. If you're not high, I sweat. Amen. By which you also save you, keep remembering what I preach unto you. Unless you have believed in vain. See, believe in vain. It doesn't affect you. Father, I was telling you first, right that which you also receive, how that Christ died for our sins according to scripture. See, Christ couldn't die any other way. That's why he's told when they threatened him that Herod going to kill you. He said, but I do need to get over here because... If I die outside of, of the spot I'm supposed to go to, to die, it's going to be an issue. The death has to have an effect. He just didn't die. It has an effect. He has to follow the prophecy. So Christ fought hard to die for you and me in the exact way God told him. And then he begged God for another way removed. So Jesus was fully on board when he got up from that prayer. He was strengthened. That's the only way. It's an ugly, nasty, shameful way. That's what I got to do. So I'm doing the right thing in the right place. With the right motive. Not in my own name. In my father's name. So he says here. And that he was buried. He rose the third day. According to the scripture. How is Jesus able to get up? Because the prophet already said he's going to get up. He's not going to be left in Sheol. He goes to the list of who saw him, Verse 8. Last of all was seen of me, born of due time, one born of due time. So now the text says no one sees Christ past Paul. This is the only thing you need to stop any Mormon knocking at your door. 
Just tell him, say, hey, I like what you say. Hey, can y'all break this up? And they, watch, and they just keep asking, what about this? Eventually, they're going to shake your hand and get on their bike and ride into the sunset. Because he can't explain it. Do you know if somebody had said there'll be nobody saved past Paul? You know, I wouldn't be talking about salvation. I'm going to be stupid on talking about salvation. They say, see, it says that nobody be saved past Paul. Man, Lord have mercy. It's over for us. I wouldn't, I wouldn't waste time. I'm going to eat, drink, and be merry. Party hard because tomorrow I'm going to die. Some kind of way we miss it. This, this place is done. So why can't do that? Because I'm a Mormon. I don't even believe all the Bible. And that's one of the parts I don't believe. See, so no matter, so the so if you sit down and talk to them past this text, you're wasting time. You're wasting your time because he's telling you, I'm gonna sit here everything you say I'm gonna lie about, because I don't believe that they are not other pro apostles. I don't believe that. So what else? What else am I talking to you about? You already told me that's it. See, brethren, this is one of the flaws of teaching people about the Bible. You don't know when to keep your pearls and put them in your pocket and walk off. You think, I'm going to get them. I'm gonna, you're not going to get them. If it, and the law warns you, they're going to bite you. You're going to get bit. Before you know, you're going to come back. I just don't understand why we have to tell people that they're going to die lost. I don't understand. That's because you got bit. Somebody told you, baby, when did you get bit? Who was you talking to last? We need to investigate. Because you got, you got, if you, if we were around a dog, we could see the whole, who bit you? Nobody bit you. They, somebody bit you, baby. Who bit you? Come on, talk to you. Come on, talk to grandma. Somebody bit you. See, you know why? Because our mind don't think like that. We just, we just, it's like, man, this thing is like the nose on your face. And it's just, it's a joke until you die. Just don't die. All I say, just don't die. You'll be all right as long as you don't die. Now, when you die, that's when it's on. Mark 16, 16. He that believes baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. Now, that's a prophecy. That's a prophecy by Christ. You think that's not going to happen? So, when you, when you let people tell you how to be baptized, be saved, you're letting them tell you the prophecies of God are not accurate. Even if they came from Jesus' mouth. See, that's how God's viewing you. He said, oh, so they don't believe even my son. That's why Christ made sure I got to say this. I've empowered this to save you. What about if T.D. Jakes baptized me? The Lord tell you, you'll find yourself in Acts 19, 1 through 5. He's not with me. Another prerequisite, they must be with me. My grandma baptized me at 15th Street Church of Christ. Your grandmother, baby, you're not safe yet. Oh, thank God he didn't let you die. Do you still believe? Let me about to talk. Oh, you can't tell me my grandmama. My grandmama did. I don't, I'm telling you, I can't do nothing about your grandma. But you can save yourself. You can save yourself. Let him die a loss if he don't. He's not with God anyway. Acts chapter 2 verse 36. Therefore let all the house of Israel know surely that God had made that same Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Verse 37, when they heard this, they were pricking their heart and said unto Peter, to the rest of your apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Here's the Jews that don't know what to do. The whole nation is lost. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the mission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the promise unto you and to your children, and to all that are fall, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And in other words, that he testified and exhort, saying, save yourself from this untoward generation. They're crooked. The Lord says they're crooked. Then they glad to receive his word of baptized. The same day they were added to them, about 3,000 souls. What did they continue in? Steadfastly. The Quran, no. Apostles' doctrine. The Apocrypha, no. Apostles' doctrine. Fellowship. Breaking of bread and in prayers. Acts 2, 5, 7. The Lord added to the church daily, such should be saved. Acts chapter 8. Is there a special <laughs> baptism for high-level people? No. As they went on their way. Acts 8, 35, then Philip opened his mouth, began to say scripture and preach unto him Jesus. As they went on their way, they came to a certain water and said to the eunuch, see his water. What the enemy to be baptized? Why are they preaching to him Moses? Why not? Moses not holy, yeah, very holy. But it's all about Christ. It was about Christ and Moses. That's why I said a prophet raised up from among your brethren like me. What he say, you have to do. You'll be cut off. Philip said, if I believe with all that heart, thou mayest in the answer said, I believe Jesus Christ, Son of God. That's a prerequisite. Son of God. Not one of the sons of God, the Son of God. 
He commanded the chariot to stand still. They went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized them. What's the result? He rejoices. I'm safe. Why can't people read that? Because you don't understand the seed. If I can make it as plain as that, a, a rose seed never grows a tulip. Never. Never. Pure rose seed never grows a tulip. The pure word of God from an unapproved source, guess what? That's the lie test. He's not with it. And it will grow what he is or something worse. You got it? It has to be a saint. So when your grandmama baptized you, she proved one thing. I'm no longer in the saint business. I clocked up. That's one. If your uncle baptized you as a Baptist preacher while your daddy, who's a gospel preacher, stood there, you out because, see, you understand something. You the saw, but the seed is attached to the person. Because we are the seed of everybody. You see how it works? Real seed word get attached to you. You who is a product of Abraham's faith. And Abraham believed only in what God said. So you'll do the same. So, no, he can't baptize. It doesn't matter. He said, well, he dead now. And I think I'm saying, you're not safe. Yeah. See, just like you said, you're not safe. So I'm so sorry. I remember, I can baptize you right now. Right now. And we can fix the problem. Just like he told Lot wife. Don't look back. I was so blase, said. God, I'm telling you, don't look back. Just don't look back. Listen. Be listening to God. Listen to God. You fool around on your wife, it's going to be bad on you. Listen, he told you that. Just listen. Just listen. Just got to listen. If you want to be saved, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, for by one spirit are we all baptized in one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, whether bond or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. See, the Lord answered the church. Acts 2, 47, we just mentioned. He had you. He's not going to put you in denominational church. I, you, know, you know, it's hard to believe, but it's really easy to believe because when the Lord came to the earth, the Jews were not right. And the world wasn't right. So what makes you think because somebody talking about Christ that they're right? They're, that's all they talked about was God. But the Lord said, you're not right. Those that separate themselves, the rest will say, you're not right. So why is it so impressive to you that the Lutherans talk about God? Why is that so impressive? The, the Sadducees went into the temple. Jesus couldn't even go do that. And then it says he couldn't do that. And went into the inner chamber, he couldn't do that. But he said, hypocrites, how can you escape hell? Why is it impressive? Because you want something other than Christ. That's why it's impressive. That's impressive. And you want us to do that. Y'all should be doing this. Says who? The Lutheran minister. And who is that? What you doing around them? Who are these people you've been with? Who are these men with you? Don't go with them and don't curse the people of God. Some of us are cursing the saints. When we get to ourselves, you curse the saints. You talk bad about the righteous. See, the one thing I have a problem with, they will, they will withdraw from you. If your life don't get right, that's what I, I don't understand that. I don't understand that. You know you're talking about people of God, right? Because we're doing what the thoughts say. Got it? See, now you're just being cursed by God. It don't matter what you do. The Lord already knows. You get to the judgment. I'm going to catch you at the judgment. I'm going to get you at the judgment. Don't worry about it. We don't worry about it no matter what you do. He's going to get us at the judgment. Those of us that don't do what the Lord says. I hope we understand this. Will this action save my soul? 1 Peter 3, 21. Here's another thing. The power of reading the answer. The life figure went to even baptisms also. Now save us. Not the putting away the filth of the flesh. Tells you how it's done. But the answer of a good conscience to our God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is gone into heaven, is on the right hand of God, angels, stars, and powers, be made subject unto him. But it just flows. And when you can't do it, all you got to do is say, help me, Lord. I just, I can't hold on to this word. I just can't hold on to it no more. Can you please help me? I'm losing my grip. Be like the psalmist. He said, I almost slipped. I had to go to church. Man, the right, the righteous broke the rich 
wicked make it and get the last drop out of a rag, man. I like to slip till I went to church. I realized, okay, the end, the end is where it gets the end. Now to remember, brethren, do what the psalmist did. Go to church and listen. Revelation 2 10, for none of those things without yourself. Behold, the devil shall cast some in the prison. And you may be tried, you shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death. I will give thee a crown of life. Somebody may say, Oh, then you go to church because you the preacher. They pay you. Nobody pay me to go to them church. I was going to church before I became a minister. I didn't even want to do that. Right now, I had that thought till the end. Till the end, I hit my heart. I say, oh, man, I should, Maybe I should start doing some teaching too from the pulpit. Maybe I was like, Evangelist. I was already in a church for 20 double digit years. Who will pay me to go to church then? Nobody pay me to go to church. Such a lie. That's why people die lost saying nasty stuff about righteous. I come to church because I love the Lord. I come to church on Wednesday and I know I'm not even teaching Bible class. So why not stay home then? I could make some good money at that time. I could, man. Good money. Because I'm, I'm a saint. I'm coming to church to learn about God. I'm not doing no evangelist. You need to come to church because you want to be saved. Not for your mama, not for your spouse. Spouse, not for your children, for you. Because nobody gonna die lost but you. You got it? When you die lost, nobody gonna die lost but you. As far as you go, you don't die lost together, one person. So it is a glory and a blessing to come to the house of God around all the mess that goes on in the church and step up to the Lord with your gift, you being the number one gift. And all the praise that come with it, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. You worry about what else somebody do, you, you don't deserve it anyway. You don't, just don't deserve it. And it's going to play out after death. Your death plays out. The Lord says, you just, it just, you just couldn't come to church for me, could you? Just like that, you just couldn't come for me, could you? You were worried about what someone said. Just, you, just, you couldn't put it aside for me. But you went to work and they were talking about you like a dog on your jaw. They tried to set you up and boy, you made that money. And I helped you. I blessed you. But you couldn't come to church with me. I'm not going to be able to help you with that. It's got to be for me. But the Lord, but you don't want that. You want to heal. Well done, thou good and faithful sir. Thou have been faithful a few things and now I make your rule over many. Enter you in into the joy of the Lord. You're not going to be worried about no saint that talk about you. You, go, you, go, you think you're going to be in the air with the Lord and go like, it's night, but boy, they used to talk about me bad on the earth. Man, you're going to be <laughs> with Jesus, man. It's so beautiful. And you're not going to be going, it's real, because you won't be up there. You'll be at the bottom. You already knew it was real. You're not going to go, is that Jesus? You're going to know that's Jesus. I'm going up with it. No one's going to go, that's Jesus. That's Ron hide us. It's more real than anything you'll ever see, including what you're looking at right now. It's more real than this book because this was made by man. The words are from God. If you need to be baptized, stay standing where you sit down. If you need prayer, do the same. Hold your hand up if you're too weary. If you listen to the message, touch the little V shaped object to the right, right on the title. It'll open up a whole list of phone numbers you can call, and we will gladly tell you where to go to be baptized. Because we know. We know. And God will guide us. Whatever you need, come now together. We stand and sing Heaven's Invitation. Day one. 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 Day what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of.